Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Hover. Finding the perfect domain name is incredibly easy with Hover. Go to hover.com slash NSS and save 10% off your first purchase. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash NSS. And by WordPress. WordPress powers 27% of all websites. Get 15% off your new website at wordpress.com slash NSS. That's wordpress.com slash NSS. Testing radiation from your cell phone. How to check email on the Echo and Facebook in VR. Live from Twit Eastside Studios in beautiful Petaluma, it's the new screensavers. Hello, Nathan Oliveras Charles. How How's it you? going? How's it I going? Am, I like I, I like great. the in the in the in the intro open. You know what? We've been working with virtual reality, so we can't actually shake hands. <laughs> no, we're in real life virtual reality. <laughs> How's it today. going? How's it going? But we are gonna show you. We've been playing with it. It was really fun. Facebook spaces. Wow, that is that is interesting. It's it's super buggy, but it, it's very novel. It's, it's very I novel. I mocked it until I actually started playing with it, and then I didn't want to get out of it. It was really fun. Thanks good. to Tony, by the way, for a nice show open. Appreciate it from San Francisco visiting. With his wife, Caitlin. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nice job. We have a big show. This is going to be, we should really get right into it. We're going to be playing with spaces. You went to UL Labs to show how they test cell phones. I get calls all the time from people say, are cell phones safe? Should I not use my cell phone? And I have a good answer for you that I guess we'll get to later in the show. All right. You really want to keep me in suspense. Don't you? <laughs> Should I? It's 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 just put my cell phone over here for a little bit. It's and... it's safe as far as we know, but there's still a debate. Yeah, the as science far as isn't we know. done. As far as we know, but a lot more to say about that. We learned yeah, a lot. Yeah, uh, we got a couple of calls for help. We're going to show you how to set up podcasting and uh, how this can protect you when you're online. This this little USB thing. I'll show you what that all is about. Megan Maroney will tell you how you can get your emails read to you on your Amazon Echo. Jason Howell has a new... We did uh, YouTube TV. Yeah. And now, are you a cord cutter? Uh, I... Do you have cable in your house? I do have cable because my internet is cheaper, but my cable box is in the closet. And what I actually use... It, well, PlayStation View is what I'm going for. you have to go into your closet to watch TV? No, I, I just leave the cable you box don't even there. Use the, the channels TV. I want... It's like the most basic package, but it was 10 bucks a month right. cheaper for my internet service. Yeah. So technically, I am a Comcast cable subscriber, but you're not I a don't cord cutter, actually but you use got a cord it. in the closeter. <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah. cord closeter. And, but, but yeah, I am using actually, PlayStation View because that has the channels I want. More than half of Americans no longer have a landline. I bet yeah. you don't have a landline. I do not. I haven't had a landline since middle school. The only reason we have a landline is for our burglar alarm. Oh, okay. Since middle school? Yeah. You went through high school without a landline? Well, my dad ran a software company out of our, oh, our living room. Oh, he was room, a geek. So so he, the, yeah. He, yeah, he was ahead of that. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I think that's the future. Why get a landline, you know? I, my daughter got her first apartment. She's in her 20s, early 20s. I said, Do you want, should we get you a phone? She said, why? I got a cell phone. Oh, there's no reason, right? It's the no truth. reason. She's also a cord cutter. Well, uh, I hate to say it, but in like the worst kind of environmental disaster, you know, disaster or something, won't the cell towers could go out and the landline could yeah. be valuable or vice versa? If your internet you really goes down both, or your right? cell goes down, the landlines often survive. But I, you know what? That even is changing these days. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. U.S. homes now, cell phone only. We were at an event. Well, I wasn't there, but my, my our colleagues, uh, Ian Thompson, Mary Jo Foley, Paul Thorat, were at the, you didn't go. I did not. New York City event. Uh, for uh, Microsoft, their EDU event. What'd you think? They showed a laptop. Uh, it is not a cheap laptop. It's a $1,000 starting point, and the one you want is actually $1,299. It's like priced the same as a MacBook Air, but it runs a stripped-down version of Windows 10 
which is called Windows 10 S, yeah. which means you can only get uh, apps from Microsoft's App Store, which is limiting, in my personal opinion. Some people might want that, though. You can't get Chrome right now. You can't get, uh, you know... And, well, and it defaults iTunes. you to Edge and Bing right. as the default browser and but, search engine. So why, why would I well, want Well, I think it's more secure. This is a... Comp well, I yeah, the security, the security argument is fair because their yeah. App Store, they'll vet the app. It's completely blah, 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 blah. more secure. Plus, if you were to download a bad app, uh, you wouldn't be able to run it because yes. it's not from the Windows Store. Yes. So yes. you can't, you, it will protect. I think there's could, some people this would be good for. It could be a way to force developers into the Windows Store, which well, would be good for Windows. that was one of my Windows. questions. Would Google make Chrome for the Windows Store? Then you could use Chrome. Would Firefox make yeah. Firefox for the Windows Store. Yeah. Would Apple make iTunes for the Windows Store? There's well, certainly pressure. Google makes Google makes Chrome for the App Store on That's iOS. Right. That's right. And Firefox does the same on iOS, and so on and so forth. Oh. So why not? It, you can. And what's interesting, if you buy this laptop for twelve ninety nine, they are offering a free upgrade to Windows ten Pro for the rest of the year. So if well, you felt, I think their idea is, well, get it. See yeah. if you can live with ten S. And if you can't, don't I, worry. There's a I'm free not upgrade. Gonna, I'm not going to spend that kind of money to see if I can live with an operating system. I need to know. It's a lot of money. Right? But I think the hope is that other companies will make education-focused Well, laptops. they've already announced it. Chrome, Many companies Chrome, have Chrome, already. Right? Because yeah. a Chromebook's a couple hundred bucks, right? right. So if, if you don't like it, what are you losing out on? Not as much as at, at stake versus this new There's Windows already a so. $189 Windows 10S laptop from one of the partners. So that's partners. probably the one you want to buy to see if you like Windows 10S or not. And if you do, hey, go and get the Ferrari model here that, that costs you as much as a MacBook What do you Air. think of the Alcantara? It's got a fabric top like the where your keyboard is where your trackpad is is fabric will it stain this this is supposed to be aimed towards college students have you ever seen a college student's uh, laptop have you ever seen their oh, keyboard ew. the thing looks disgusting so will this will this stain is my I question don't, i'm not it's not stains it's like kind of if it gets matted and kind of greasy uh, yeah and, ooh. yeah I, we've we've seen college dorm rooms we've seen frat yeah. houses we've seen your college couch None of that stuff looks good. I don't know if I want to look at your college cloth keyboard. But hey, I mean, you know, figure it, it out. Is a germ magnet too? I, mean, I don't know. And what about Cheetos? Did you, I mean, oh, Cheetos, that's fair, that's fair. What about Cheetos? That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. I mean, but it's pretty looking, but we need, we need to get some in, we need to test it, we need to see the real reviews. I ordered one. Did you? Yeah, we'll get one. I did not. Middle of June, well, that's my job. I ordered one. There you go. Got the burgundy. Not a bad, bold color choice. Bold, bold color yeah. choice. <laughs> well, be, there's no confusing it with anything else, that's for sure. <laughs> Speaking of uh, security, a lot of people, a lot of journalists we know got bit yep. by, on Wednesday by a Google Docs virus. It really was a worm. It was, it was kind of a scam. Basically, some, some hackers were hacking into your friend's uh, 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 Google accounts and then sh using their accounts to share a doc with so, you so look at the, to dupe you into opening it. You would get an email, and it would be from somebody you know, uh, like yep. Ron Amadio. You'd get an email that would say, Ron has invited you to view the following document. Notice he's redacted his, yep. <laughs> his name. Notice, though, one of the giveaways was there were other people in the link, including HHHHHHHH. That's who yep. this was really from. And then if you open it in Google Docs, it will give you the OAuth box from Google yep. that, get, that logs you into your account. Don't worry, you're not giving your account information to the bad guy. But you are, now this is, this stop right here. Because this is where, if you were really paying attention, you would have noticed. Yep. Google Docs, well, that's normal. People send me share links all the time. Would like to read, send, delete, and manage my email. And that's where they were able to hijack other people's accounts and then manage your contacts. Into, exactly. So they'd go through your contacts. The very first thing would happen if you said allow yep. is they would mail the same email to everybody you know. Yep. So it would then be coming from you. I got this from maybe five or six different people. We know a lot I of people got bit by this. fortunate enough to delete them all and not, not fall into that trap. The HHHHH thing tipped me off. But also getting that request from people that I literally haven't spoken with maybe in a well, few and years. And read the permissions because yep. normally you don't see those permissions yep. when you're shared a Google Doc. No, you know, we got to all get in the habit of not just clicking OK, OK, OK. Read what it's asking for. They, were crea they created a rogue Google app on the App Engine that then did all of this. As far as we can tell, there was no malicious effect. It just, it just spread like wildfire. Yeah. Within an hour, Google disabled it. Yeah. So you should look and see if in your Google settings, google.com slash dashboard, if you've given an app called Google Docs permission. There, that's not 
really that's, Google Docs. It, it's, uh, but it, it won't do any harm if you leave it. And it's disabled it, now. It, uh, you know, to kind of connect this back to what Microsoft's trying to do with their app store, like th every company has these sorts of checks set up right. so that these sorts of fake apps don't make it to their to their app store, don't make it out into the wild. That's an interesting I'm surprised question, Google though. didn't catch that before. Wouldn't this have happened? Even if you had Windows 10s, because this wasn't an app that you ended up running on your system. This was no. a through you, the web browser. You, you were tricked yeah. through an, a phishing email to give yeah. permission yep. to a bad guy running an app on Google servers, not your. Computer. And it wouldn't matter what browser you're using, whether you're using Edge so. or Chrome, because it's a it is a web app. It's, an, wow. it's a website. Wow. My account. I'm sorry. Give, let me give you the right uh, link. My guy smiling in the chat room saying it's not dashboard. It's myaccount.google.com, and you'll see a list of apps that you've given permission to to access your Google stuff. There'll be one called Google Docs. Google says, we don't, that's, does, that's not real, we don't ask permission. We have permission, we're Google. So, <laughs> so, but you could leave it there, it's harmless, but you know, delete, but, but it anyway. revoke it. If you see it, that it, means you got bit. It's harmless so far based on what we know, but well, could, could that be So the app was running on their later? server and they've disabled that app, so I don't yeah. think it could then. Yeah come back to life and attack you. I, I think it's not, there's no zombie. But the funny thing is, whoever did this, it was more a proof of concept. There was, as far as we could tell, no payload. Mm -hmm. It just spread itself. But it reminds me a lot of the earliest email viruses like Melissa, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Kind of, kind of a troll move, kind of a troll move. It was move. a troll, it was a troll move. Often though, those kinds of moves are a test. Oh, that worked. Now, now let's, let's go do some what real do stuff. next time, right? So please, when you're uh, giving people permissions, especially with your Google accounts, re and two-factor wouldn't have saved you, right? Nope. Because you say allow, and it would keep pop up the two-factor exactly. thing, and it would same thing would happen. Yep. So uh, wow, that's uh, scary mm, stuff. Mm, mm, mm. All right, in a little bit, we are going to do our call for help. We've got a caller from Hong Kong. That's fun. Is Aaron ready? Uh, while we're getting Aaron ready, and then we're going to put the uh, visors on, and you are going to make fools of ourselves. We've already posted pictures on our Facebook timeline of us before the show playing around in this new spaces. <laughs> you're a VR guy. You like VR, right? You, this is, you're going to be playing with your own Oculus I, I, I do. I do enjoy VR. What do you think? I guess I'm a bit of an early adopter. It's super buggy, and it's really novel right now. I, 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 I have some... I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. My, my avatar doesn't really look like me. I don't, I don't know if there yours we are does. In, if, uh, if my beard looked that good in real life, I would be stoked. That is a <laughs> beautiful full beard. I don't know why it thinks that I have such a fantastic beard, but okay, great. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you can't really change the facial features too much right now. You don't have much, much choice. Right yeah. we, have, we both have gigantic uh, foreheads. Uh, and which, little tell tiny tummies. Yeah, I'm, That's, I, I like I'm that. Right. <laughs> I got yeah. some, I got I some like love that. handles, and they yeah, kind of took that away. That, so, yeah. uh, and you can't, you know, you can't edit the T-shirt you're wearing. So right now we both look kind of like generic Muppets. Uh, we'll show Muppets, you. But we'll actually give you a demo. Yeah. We're gonna do it. it but but first, I guess it's a good place to start, right? Let's yes. Let's talk about where do you go to register your domain name? I'll tell you where I go, and I have been going for the last few years, and I love it. Hover. Dot com. When you have a great idea for a blog or a startup, even if you're not ready to launch, go to Hover. Dot com and get a great domain name, fast, easy. Unlike those other places, there's not a bunch of buttons to click, a lot of upsell going on. They have now everything. Over 400 domain extensions, .com, .net, niche extensions, .design, .tech. I've got leo.pizza, good one to have. Oh, Look, I didn't know that was possible. .pizza! <laughs> I want that You know one. what you need? NateOG.ninja. If it Ooh, exists, it does exist at hover.com. I like it. How about Nate.horse? Uh, Maybe not. not. I'm, I like Ninja and Pizza better. <laughs> not, not so into the horse thing. 400 but. of them to choose from. Once you find your domain, it's very easy to set it up. In fact, you saw it one click setup. I have a WordPress site. It was so easy to set it up. Boom, boom, boom. And they have a very nice DNS manager for you more experienced people. I, I'm, I'm living in their DNS manager all the time because I have lots of sites I manage and it's fantastic. Every single Hover domain name has who is privacy built in. You know you want that. They know you want that. They don't try to upsell you. They just build it in automatically. Every domain that's supported to keep it confidential. Uh, with volume discounts, the more domains you have in your account, the more of a discount you automatically get. I'm up to, I think, 80 or 90. Wow. <laughs> You're not playing around. I got a and, lot. And, and, and so you transferred a lot over, huh? 
Uh, yeah, oh, and that's another thing, by the way. If you're moving from someone else, they make it very easy to try. If you want to move to Hover from any other site, go call them up, and their concierge service will move it all over for you, and that makes it really, really easy. I just love it. Anyway, Hover.com. Find a domain name for your idea, and go to Hover.com slash... Oh, I got a deal for you. Go to Hover.com slash NSS. You'll get 10% off your first purchase. Hover.com slash NSS. All right, let's go to Hong. You want to go to Hong Kong? Let's, let's do it. Have you, have you ever been to Hong Kong? <laughs> Not yet. I've always wanted to go. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Leo. Hi, Nathan. Good How's to it see going? You. How's it going? Attack yeah. of the fifty-foot woman. <laughs> <laughs> now, are uh, uh, are you 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 obviously are not from Hong Kong. Are you uh, uh, an Emma Gray? Are you living there? Uh, uh, actually, I was. I moved here when I was one. So I, I grew up here. I've been, uh, yeah. You well, are a Hong Konger. Yeah. I am so. I would love to go. It looks like a beautiful place. Really exciting. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really ama amazing here. Um, it's really beautiful. The city's great. Uh, and you know, there's. It, it's kind of this interesting mix of city life and the nature's right there because you know the mountains and everything are right next to the city. So it's a lot of fun here. Well, what can we do to help? Home. You? Um, okay. Well, um, so my wife and a friend are looking to start their own podcast. Oh, that's and, nice. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, we've never done anything like this before. So our friend has the auto uh, recording hardware. She's a radio producer. Ah, she's she's a musician. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have, like, audition to edit. But um, What are they going to do? What's the, their podcast going to be? Um, it's something called uh, uh, Rockstar Science. They're actually trying to interview uh, scientists. Um, Rockstar Science. Uh, within oh. Hong Kong. Love it. And so it's kind of like it. Uh, and, yeah. So they'll be going, they won't be sitting at a desk. They'll be going out and interviewing people and bringing it back, editing it up in audition and packaging it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'll depend on availability. If, right. if they have a place they can do it or, you know, because uh, she has a small office space as well, so they could bring them all So there. understand right. what a podcast is. It's an audio or video file. You know, that's, that's where you begin. Uh, and the way it becomes a podcast, I mean, you could just put it on the internet, somebody could click it and download it. The only thing that distinguishes that from a podcast is this RSS feed. And the idea of the RSS feed is it's something that people can subscribe to, software can check it periodically, typically hourly or daily, and if there's a new show, automatically download it. That's what makes it a podcast. Okay. That's, the, that's the distinctive feature of a podcast. Other, and it's one of the reasons I don't like the word podcast, because otherwise it's just a show. And, and, and it's show an audio just, file. It's a video yeah, file. Yeah, you're distributing you, on the Internet, right? Yeah. But the RSS is kind of cool, and people do like that. Although we've noticed, in fact, lately we've been telling people, subscribe, subscribe, because most people we notice now are just mm -hmm. clicking and downloading or clicking and streaming or watching us live. Mm. Uh, so it's important that you start with a website. I, I take it you've got that, right? Yeah, yeah, Squarespace. <laughs> a good start. I, you, somebody said yeah. you're a Squarespace developer. Yes, yeah, nice. yeah I, I've built a few sites for a couple of uh, small SMEs. Right. Between the three of you, you got all the tools you need. I this think is so. Great. This is yeah. great. Does, let me ask you this though: Does Squarespace have a any podcasting features like a plugins or anything? Uh, not that. No, not that I know of. I, it's my watch. Unfortunately. Jerry's looking around. <laughs> I don't know how I stop this. It's just it's making sounds. Uh, <laughs> Honey, I'll call you later, okay? Uh, 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 so, uh, all right, well, that's a disadvantage because what you've got to find, first of all, is you've got to find somewhere to store this that people are going to download it from. For instance, we use Cashfly, right? That's mm -hmm. a CDN. But that could cost a lot of money, especially if, if suddenly their show is huge. Every single person who listens to your show costs you money, okay? Because oh, wow. it's a download. It, it's a different medium a different model than radio or TV, once you set up a TV or a radio antenna, a million people can watch or one person can watch. It costs exactly the same. But this stream you're watching, if you're watching us live or if you're watching us, you have to download it. That's taking bandwidth. That's costing money. So it's taxing someone else's servers to distribute right. it to you. And the more people listen to it, it's kind of like a magazine, right? If you yep, yep. if you print a magazine, every single subscriber costs you money. Yeah. So mm. that's something to be aware of. Now there are services. There's Podomatic. There's Libsyn. Uh, there's Spreaker. There are services that will offer you uh, bandwidth, and they're des all three of those are designed for podcasts. Uh, in all three cases, they will also give you a website, and they have software on their website 
that will ge- there's Podomatic that will generate the RSS feed automatically. It's a the RSS oh, cool. feed's a little tricky because there is a standard RSS, but there's also iTunes in their infinite wisdom. Apple expanded it and that does more. So the RSS feed has to be generated specifically for podcasts. So you need some special software to do that. These all three of those sites will do that automatically. There's also a, a number of exten- extensions for uh, our sponsor WordPress. Same thing, you can set up a WordPress site and then run a, a extension that a plug in for WordPress. One of the easiest routes to go by. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're doing a podcast. Absolutely. How do you do yours? Yeah. So, so I mean, it sounds like you, you're working with some pros here. You have you have one person who's a, you know radio pro, another person who's a musician, and yourself being a web developer. That's a great trio. Uh, for those mm. who maybe aren't as uh, as experts as, as as you all are, um, a good place to start is is SoundCloud. Um, I'm making a podcast with that's a couple a great other friends, idea. and that's it's called free, Buzzkill. It, mostly free. It right? actually is free. So we we host our podcast here on SoundCloud. Uh, it's just the, me and two other friends sitting around one uh, mic, a, bl- a blue mic Yeti, which is a great a beginner microphone because it does directional and omnidirectional. Does it make an RSS feed for you? It does. It makes oh, the RSS feed nice. for you. And it's like 20 good. bucks a year once you get past about 10 episodes. So it's a good place to see if you even like doing these things. There Before are a number of different money, tiers. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of different you tiers. Know, it's kind of like YouTube for audio, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah, that's basically what it is. YouTube's free, free, but but then there's this issue of well, what, what's the picture going to yeah. be? Now, the RSS feed on, on SoundCloud actually distributes out to TuneIn, to Google nice. Play, to iTunes, to everything except for Spotify and Audible. Okay. Uh, for Spotify, and, and those you, you and th- I know why that is. We had to make, we had to actually talk to Spotify and make yeah. a deal. You have to talk to Audible and make a deal. Mm-hmm. But, but normally, if you just have an RSS feed, somebody you can, can use basically everything else. A podcast, podcast. client uh, and subscribe to it because it's yeah. just RSS. As far as okay. the software you're using, it's great that you already have Adobe uh, That's Audition. That's what we used for years. That's fantastic. Yeah. For those who maybe haven't spent the money on that sort of thing already, uh, if you're using uh, Audacity's uh, free. Oh, well, Audacity on Windows is mm-hmm. great. That's yep. a great place to start. Or Linux Super or Mac. Uh, or GarageBand on the Mac. That's, is, that's a f- uh, free software as well. Uh, so you really can't go wrong with those. But if you've got Adobe Audition, it's fairly easy. Well, There's going to the be a little bit more of a learning key, a curve, but once you really get into yeah. it, it's going to have um, a lot more options on how to level your audio, make it sound a little better, a little more polished, a little more professional. And if your friend's doing the radio stuff, they're definitely going to know how to use that. Audition is uh, what almost everybody in radio still uses. I used it for years. It was Cool Edit Pro. Adobe yeah. bought it. And it really is a great. It is, it is overkill, yeah. but you know, it, it, you could do a lot, including as I did in the earliest days of Twit, take noise out. I was, a, I spent a lot mm-hmm. of time in Audition trying to denoise this stuff. Yeah, I think Audition this has come a long way. It's a lot easier. Than it Audition has great plugins. I love um, uh, Logic has great plugins. GarageBand right. has great plugins. Right. I actually found a recommendation for some great plugins from Jason Snell's website, Six Colors. Oh, neat! And th- that was kind of a great place to get started uh, with GarageBand, which is what we're using. Like I said, it's a free app. Uh, so, you know, really, no matter what sort of budget you're in, there's a good place to get started. So, you've got to find somewhere to store it. You've got to find a, a way to make an RSS feed. And then, even if you use SoundCloud, you still should have a website. Because good idea. Because that can still link back to SoundCloud. You could actually embed SoundCloud players on your website. It's really important mm. that anything you do on the Internet has a website attached with it. Obviously, it you're going to use Squarespace. It helps for SEO right? reasons as well. And Squarespace yeah. will support SoundCloud plugins. So, you, you could yeah. have your Squarespace blog. Here's our show. Here's what we interviewed. Here's pictures. And then right there, listen and a button, and it's just SoundCloud. So that's a, uh, SoundCloud's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Thank you so much, guys. A lot and, of good um, choices. I, I, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, and just kind of uh, an additional question is kind of like, you know, what, what are some rookie mistakes you kind of see being made with guys just, or people just starting out? And maybe what, what are some of your pet peeves with other podcasts? Oh, Lord, I there? could go on and on on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, every mistake possible I've made. Every one. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I think... You're newer at this. You yeah, tell me. I, I think one of the things to, to, to be willing to do, people kind of like authenticity. So just take them I along agree. that ride. Be whoever you are. So if your friends are new to this, say, hey, listen, this is who I am. I, I work in radio. This is who I am. I, I'm a musician. But we've never made a podcast before. So go along with us on this journey, and we're going to hit some bumps and, and bruises, but give us feedback. And, and kind of be willing to experiment and not feel like you have to have a set format from day one. Mm. You know, Kind of learn and grow with your audience. Um, 
That being said, if you want people to actually listen to this thing, you have to deliver on a consistent basis. So if you say you're going to do it weekly, do it weekly. And this is this is uh, you know something definitely Leo can speak to. But being consistent, um, being engaged with whoever, yeah. whether you have five or six followers or you got thousands or millions, engage with them and and be willing to take that feedback and that criticism, good or good so. Or Aaron, bad. are you are you the producer? You're not going to be on the show, but you're helping them out. Yeah, yeah, I'll just be helping them out slightly. Yeah. They, they, they're actually be able to handle everything themselves. I'll probably just help them with the website. When you do your <laughs> podcast with Brian X. Chen and Mark Millian, do you do kind of what we do, try to do it all live to tape? Or do you, we, will you we do, do it in one take? Two? No, one take. We, do it in, we do it in one That's take. That's kind of my is... advice, too. I did the Lifehacker podcast uh, a couple of days ago, and they were stopping and redoing yeah. it, and I thought, I just feel sorry for the editor because... So, and what you lose is energy. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's okay if you make mistakes. It's you know, authentic. It's we, real. We make mistakes on on our on the the Buzzkill podcast all the time. And it's fine. and it, you know it's it's it's, it's just being human. It's, it's just normal. being human. Yeah. Right. And and I, I think people kind of like to see that a little bit. Um, now hopefully you'll get better and you'll be more polished as time goes on. But um, you know that that's kind of the realness that we're talking about that people are looking for. I, I think that there's two kinds of styles. There's the NPR style, yeah. and because NPR has been so successful, and the NP, you know the NPR crew, the the Planet Money crew yeah. with Serial, and, and 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 as a result, there is that one style which is very edited, very polished. And I'm a fan of that very style. Very perfect. I like that. It's just not what I make. It's a kind of podcast. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, especially now starting out, because that's the most popular podcast, think, oh, that's how you do a podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in my opinion, having done this since 2004, I far prefer the peop just people talking podcasts. Mm -hmm. And if your mm -hmm. content's good and your passion is real, uh, and, and understand, you're never going to make any money at it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you know, it's going to be, you got to, here's something I always tell people. If you were standing here in a room talking to 100 people, you'd be thrilled, right? Yeah. Wow, yeah. I got a great audience. Yeah. People, they do a podcast, they only have a 500 listeners. They go, oh, man, I'm never getting anywhere. You Be happy. 100 yeah. people, you know? Yeah. And, and if you can grow, if you can get to 1,000, that's considered to be the magic number where things might start to roll. It will never take off if you never get past 1,000. Mm -hmm. Once you get to 1,000, it might take off, no guarantees. And to be honest, if you want to sell advertising, you're talking 10, 20, 30,000. And a lot of the advertisers we talk to won't look at you unless you're 50,000 listeners. Honestly, so don't think about making money. Yeah, when you're starting out, just mm -hmm. make sure that it's fun, it for fun for yeah. you. Yeah. You're the one making it. Uh, the one that I do with a couple buddies, we're making podcasts that are about 25 to 30 minutes long. They're not the typical one hour, two hour long you know, podcast. Uh, that works for us. We want something a little shorter, a little punchier. Um, and right now, we're not doing ads or anything. It's just, it's just fun versus what we're doing here at Twit. Like this, this is a business. This is a business. It's right. a different thing. Uh, and somebody in the chat room is saying that our friend Don McAllister at Screencast Online has a two-part series on podcasting that he found very helpful and inspirational. Don mm -hmm. certainly knows his stuff. ScreencastsOnline.com. That might be one to... Uh, to look okay, okay, I'll look it up. Yeah, and I could go on and on and on, but yeah, we threw a lot of information at you here. <laughs> Hopefully, this helps. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. It, and I got a professional team recording it for me, so I can come back to <laughs> Man, it. Man, you guys are golden. <laughs> You're golden. Have fun. Yeah. What's the name gonna be? Thank you. Rockstar uh, Science. Rock Yes, yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll be the name. I'll look for it. Yeah, I'd look, like to looking see it. for it. Yeah, it's yeah. Sent, tweet us a link no, or something. Send a like message that. when it's out. Yeah, we will we'll do. All right, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for your time, guys. Anytime, Aaron. Thank you. I hear music. You know what? I think it's in the background this of his place. Facebook Spaces is calling me. <laughs> is that what that That's is? What that is. We're going to do that in a little bit. You're also going to go to the UL Labs and we're going to find out how we know cell phones are safe. Uh, next week, Aaron Newcomb will be on the show. That's going to be a lot of fun. Another Aaron. Aaron, of course, has a new book just came out called Linux for Makers. I love that. And we are going to be with Aaron at the Maker Fair. I want to tell everybody, May 19th, that's a week from Friday, Father Robert Balasser, Aaron Newcomb, and I will all be there. We're going to have a booth. If you have a project you've been working on, bring it. We'll have a camera crew there. We could, we'll do pieces on the show the following day. Uh, we'll, I have pictures we can sign, give you stickers. Love to meet you all. That's the, and we don't know the time yet, but... One to five. We do know the time. One to five. Okay. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do from two to five? We're going to be down there. Come down, please. <laughs> 
please. Uh, it's Maker Fair. If you go to Maker Fair with an E at the end, dot com, you can get your tickets, and we'll see you. That's the original Maker Fair, the San Mateo. Uh, it, it's uh, it's, it's a great Maker time. Fair. What a thing. awesome. Five nineteen. Padre, me, Aaron. Will you, are you going to come down for that? I might swing by. I, I would love so. to see you. Yeah. I think so. All right. Oh, and if you want to ask Aaron Newcomb a question, here's how. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. A question I get all the time, not so much from people who watch Twit, but from the radio show. Mm -hmm. Are cell phones safe? And you know, there's a brain cancer doctor who said, well, I don't know if they're safe, but I wouldn't let my kids use one. The World Health Organization put out a really kind of lukewarm warning, mostly like, well, we don't know. But maybe not. So I thought it'd be fun to send you down to the underwriters' labs where they test cell phones yep. for radiation. Yeah. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, we, we got a great tour of their SAR lab. And basically, they're testing cell phones, they're testing uh, smartwatches, they're testing laptops, any sort of wireless device. They're testing for cellular radiation, but also things like Wi Fi and just kind of any, any wireless connections. And they actually have these pools of different liquids that mimic the properties of human tissue. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Um, there are actually different standards all over the world. Um, and we had put together a little video package kind of showing, showing what we did there. Let's take a look. The smartphone in your pocket, the laptop on your desk. How do you know it's safe? Well, the products in your home, the things you already use, many of them were tested out by UL, an independent third party that tests out the gadgets that we have in our lives. We're here with Dave Weaver in the Specific Absorption Rate Laboratory, right? The SAR Lab, yes. The SAR Lab, and you are the SAR Czar, is that what I heard you I, I run the SAR Lab, so yeah, I am the SAR Czar. Exactly. All right, so take us through uh, this, this whole setup you got here. You have some liquid, we have these robotic arms. What are we looking at and what does it do? Okay, so first of all, SAR is a measurement of how much energy a a user of, say, a cell phone, is receiving how much energy is coming into the head or the body. We don't just test phones, it's laptops, cell phones, watches, anything that's got a, a transmitter in it and is used within 20 centimeters of the body requires this testing by law. And that those uh, levels are controlled by FCC, Industry Canada, various government agencies around the world. What we do in here is measure those levels to make sure that they, the phones meet the requirements. So. We've got the robot, oh, we'll come to that in a second, but first of all we've got uh, Sam. This is specific anthropomorphic mannequin. You can see there's some liquid in here. This is simulating the electrical parameters of tissue in the head. All right, so what does a liquid have to have inside of it to simulate a human head or the human body? Depends on the frequency that we're operating at. Uh, the very low frequency liquids uh, historically use sugar and salt and, and water, basically. The high frequency liquids so above three gigahertz, they were oil and water with an emulsifier to make sure they didn't mix together. The modern liquids, they're a chemical called tween, which uh, is mixed with different quantities of water to give us the appropriate uh, parameters for the liquids. Underneath, there's a phone at the moment, this is transmitting away, which uh, this is what we're testing. The robot arm here is maneuvering an antenna against the surface of the head on the inside and measuring the uh, electric field strength in the liquid once it's completed a scan of the area where the phone is, we can then calculate the specific absorption rate that's being uh, generated by the phone. And so the signals that are coming from the phone, what is it? Is it everything from like Wi-Fi to a phone call to text messages and Bluetooth? Everything. Uh, Wi-Fi, certainly. License band, certainly. LTE, GSM and all of those. Bluetooth, sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, if the power is below a certain threshold, testing isn't required. So about how many of these tests do you have to run for each device that you are testing? Typical smartphone with lots of LTE on it, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of tests. And each of these tests takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on the frequency that we're testing and the size of the device. And you're usually getting the devices well before we get them on store shelves, right? That would be nice. <laughs> uh, some companies have very, very tight deadlines. We'll see the device a few weeks before it's gonna hit the shelves. Other companies are great. They'll, they'll send it months ahead and we've got time. Well, we always have time, it's just how much time. So you're, you're testing for global standards, uh, but there are differences. In the United States, uh, what do we look for in terms of uh, how close a device is to the body and where, and what do you look for in other countries? Okay, so for manufacturers in the United States, um, 
you're, you're going to wear your phone against your body, most people keep it in the pocket, but you're supposed to wear it in a holster and the distance that that holster, the separation distance mm -hmm. that that holster provides is specified by the manufacturer in their handbook or user guide. So some manufacturers have got a 5 millimeter separation distance, some use 10, some use 15. Um, so you, you really ought to buy a holster which provides that separation distance if you want to make sure that the, the SAR is uh, correct level. So most of us carry our phones in our front pockets or our back pockets, uh, definitely a lot closer than a holster would have it, and definitely close to some very important organs for all of us. Uh, are there any countries that replicate that sort of usage in their testing? The European Union has recently come out with some new uh, requirements that uh, devices should be tested in accordance with the way they're used. And the European Union has basically said you should never have it any further away than a few millimeters, which is very imprecise, but that's what the wording is in the particular document. You also have uh, a section called the Over the Air Laboratory, mm -hmm. and there, tell me a little bit about like what you're testing for in the OTA lab. OTA lab, um, as, as you say, Over the Air, is to assess how well the phone transmits, how uniform the pattern is as the phone is, is radiating, so that the the calls don't drop too often. Yeah. So it's basically signal strength with the network, whatever network you're using? Essentially, yeah. And there's also a receiver test to make sure that the, the receiving performance is, is good in all directions at the same time as well. Which, it's not a governmental requirement, it's a requirement of the carriers, AT&T and Verizon. So it's slightly different for what we're doing here. Well, Dave, thanks for taking us through all the testing you do when it comes to networking and wireless stuff for our devices. What else does UL do? UL tests a whole host of products uh, from mattresses to make sure they're not going to catch fire, to fire extinguishers to make sure they do put out fires. <laughs> um, you name it, we'll test it to make sure it is safe and is going to do the job it's supposed to do. We test thousands and thousands of products. The gamut is huge. Uh, we're, we're doing stuff now that we wouldn't have dreamed of doing 10 or 15 years ago. You know, I, 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 we, I really want to say how grateful we are that UL Labs exists. Remember the horrible problems people had with those hoverboards bursting into yep. flames. Yep. None of those were UL approved. Mm -hmm. The government made a law saying you can't sell hoverboards that aren't UL approved, and the problem went away. Yeah, and just to be clear, UL is not a government entity. They are actually a private, uh, privately indus held industry. company. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, but they're global. They're one of the biggest independent testing agencies out there, and they test across different government standards. So if you see the UL logo on a device, it means that they've run it through their gamut of I'm tests. Yeah, they're doing it. And it's safe not only in the U.S., but in other countries as well. I mean, it's, it's a company that not a lot of people know about, but if you look at some of the devices in your home, you probably have a they couple of They all have that UL logo. UL, you exactly. better hope they all have the that. The fire U suppression system in my apartment complex has a UL logo on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty fascinating. We, uh, by the way, the UL is not the only company that does exactly this kind of cell phone testing. Before a cell phone can be sold in the United States, the FCC performs a very similar uh, set of tests, a, a subset of what the UL does. The UL yes. does a lot more. Yes. So... Are cell phones safe? Well, yes, uh, yes, based on what we know so far. So here's the bottom line. Uh, cell phones have been around kind of popular-ish for about maybe the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And in that time, the standards haven't changed much. Uh, there have been studies that have been done by scientists that show that uh, cell phone radiation uh, can actually damage human tissue, but the safety levels that are acceptable are 50, 50 times below what that level would be. So it should be super, super safe. Here's the question, and here's the part that's unanswered by scientists so far, uh, and something that uh, Dave from you all spoke to me about. Um, we don't know what it's like to have a cell phone in our pocket from the time that we're, say, maybe in middle school to the time that we're 80, 90 years, years old. And not to mention having a smartwatch on your wrist, a laptop in your backpack, uh, Wi-Fi in your home, all of these different things, right? You think about the dozens of sort of smart devices that we're bringing to our lives every day. Uh, and none comes closer to you are, and to very important parts of you than a smartwatch and a cell phone. So. Uh, Yes, it's safe based on what we know so far. The reason why the limit is 50 times below what has been proven to be damaging to the human body is because we don't know if radiation will compound over time and damage tissue in the long run. So uh, we think that they're safe, and the reason why the standards are so harsh is to hopefully ensure that. There, both the National Institutes of Health and the CDC uh, have extensive websites talking about cell phone safety. If you're concerned, you should read those. Yes. Uh, I think when cell phones were new, there was a lot of reason to be concerned. 
The type of radiation it is, non-ionizing radiation, doesn't have a history of problems, especially at that level. But now that we've had them for decades and have not seen, and this is important, you may hear anecdotal stories, but there has not been an increase in brain cancer rates mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. other related cancers. So I think while we don't know for sure, the evidence is increasing that it, that there isn't a problem from cell phones. Yes. I'm not concerned and I let my kids use them and I use them. So far, the signs are good. It looks like we're but good so But who wears far. them in a holster? Well, th th I'm glad you brought that up. So <laughs> the, the U.S. standard, the U.S. I standard... I keep mine in a safe place next to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> The, the U.S. standards for this are actually uh, the highest in terms of radiation. So yeah. in this regard, we're doing pretty good. But the U.S. standards also ask companies, and UL and the FCC, to measure the this hip. as though it were in a holster but in your hip. But nobody does which that Which nobody anymore. does. In Europe, they actually simulate it in being in your pocket. Where do you which keep is more your realistic. cell phone? I keep it in my left pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I think a little higher may be better. <laughs> <laughs> now, I keep it right there. Now, there, there are some kind of basic things that if you look at the manuals that come with your phone, which nobody ever does, there's some basic tips. So using a wireless headset is something that most manufacturers recommend. And that's BS, I'll tell you why. That wire is, a, is an antenna mm -hmm. that conducts the energy from the phone into your ear. It is not any better. It, and, which is a good point. The holsters, of course, <laughs> nobody uses that. They nobody recommend that as well. Bluetooth. So. Is that better? No, because you're putting a radio transmitter and receiver in your ear. <laughs> I, I, I feel completely safe. I understand why people might. Uh, and I understand why there's reason to be maybe cautious, because mm -hmm. we use these a lot. They're you know, glued to our head a lot. Although, notice we don't talk on them much anymore. Not as much right? as we used to. And the farther, one thing really remember, not only are these very low power, but the, f but the power the radiation decreases the inverse of the square root of the distance. So it, it cre decreases very rapidly. If you're holding a phone here, hardly any radiation is reaching any part of your body but your hand. Mm -hmm. So if I get hand cancer, I'll let you know. Now you might, you might ask, given that the standards haven't changed much over the last 20 years and that we haven't seen any evidence of this right. really being damaging and that you feel safe, why does you all need to exist? Why is this important? Well. Interestingly enough, Dave mentioned that sometimes they'll get devices from companies that are new to making hardware, uh, startups, Kickstarter projects, things like this for testing, and they aren't up to the standards, and they actually have to tell those companies to go back good. and do things again. So uh, That's despite good. this being routine testing, despite this being standards that every company should know and comply with, not all do, and so it's actually very good that things like UL do exist. Yeah. And there, there was a rat study that came out about a year ago. Uh, there's some debate even over that. The, the, uh, the NIH and uh, Consumer Reports was concerned. Scientific American had an article that said, no, a marginal rat study does not prove that cell phones <laughs> cancer. Everybody's got a rat in this hunt. Anyway, I feel safe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think we don't need to worry about it. We're going to uh, glue more electronics to our forehead in just a moment. <laughs> Nathan and I are going to... Nathan and I are going to chum around in VR in Facebook's new Spaces app. It's a beta version. It is. It takes an Oculus Rift. And it feels like an alpha, I yeah. have to what? say. You know, you, you brought your uh, gaming, yeah. your VR game machine. I have our Overgum. Yeah, I got mine version. set up in our new Go room. ahead. Go into your office. Let's get started in right. a second. All right. We're going to try this in a second. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage. Boy, you know, I bet you it's from Quicken Loans because these guys are the best mortgage lender in the country. They've got all the J.D. Power customer satisfaction awards, number one mortgage servicing, mortgage origination for years. So they're great. But what they also are are geeks. They're really, uh, if you read up on the story of Quicken Loans, this is a great company. And they are, they love technology. It's, it's, it's empowered them and it empowers us as consumers. They now have a completely online mortgage approval process. No more paperwork. No, You don't even have to go to the bank. You can skip the banks and even skip the waiting. Because of computers, this thing is fast. You could literally be at an open house, pull out your phone, go to quickenloans.com slash NSS. You could do everything standing right there, including submit pay stubs and bank statements. You even could choose the rate and the term of your loan. Press go and before, within minutes, before you leave, you will have approval for a home loan from the best lender in the country, this is awesome. Quickenloans.nss. They call it Rocket Mortgage because it's fast, it's easy, and it lifts the burden of the home loan process. Rocket Mortgage. Go to quickenloans.com/nss. Of course, equal housing lender. 
Licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. All right, now, I have my ultimate virtual reality gaming machine down here. We built this, remember, uh, two years ago now, almost. Right, we built it for the new screensavers. It's been a while. Uh, we got it tuned up. I think we put a new card in there. This is the uh, NVIDIA 10... What is it? 1080? 1080 Ti. 1080 Ti. Whoa. Who bought that? You did. <laughs> I did? No, actually, we got it for, uh, we got it for uh, benchmarking. Right. We're going to show you how uh, much faster it can make a Mac. This is the special Mac version. But we thought we'd put it in here since we got it. I'm going to put in my Oculus Rift Visor. And we went out and got the new Oculus Touch controllers. Everybody's raving about these. These just came out last month, and they make a big difference because now you have hands in your virtual space. So I am going to go into our virtual space. Nathan has, Nathan has gone into his. I'm already there. You're, you're already there. I'm waiting right. for you. Spaces is launching now. Um, it's, I have to say, at first, I thought this is when I first saw it, I thought, oh, we're at an amusement park. Look, press any button to continue. All right. Uh, I have already logged in through my Facebook account. You do need one of those. And now I'm going to invite Nate. Request to join. Oh, that's me asking to join you. Your request was sent successfully. Now I'm in his space. That's okay. So we're standing in front of a table, as you can see, in a, you know, and this is, what the... <laughs> hey, Nate, what are you doing? <laughs> Whoa, when Good did you do that with you. your hair? I, <laughs> what? It looks like Cheetos. Wait a minute, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, there, let me get a tool because I can look in a mirror and I can see what I look like. Let me just get the, what, how get the my, selfie stick. How did my hair get so messed up? That's just weird. <laughs> all right. Looks like there's some nice people sitting on that park bench over there. I can leave that mirror there. What is all this? Can we get rid of all this? What is this here? Oh, these are some photos that, uh, that oh, I wanted nice. to share with you. This is the oh, one where neat. I fell out of a boat uh, and uh, with some friends, actually. You can see it right there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we can share photos with each other. So it feels uh, like Nate and I are kind of, sort of in the same space. Not really. Um, I mean, I see a, an avatar. We're in a park, but nobody else is moving in the park. Um, and and let's, let's show you some of the tools we can... Now, you, you poke with these things. I'm still not... So, I tried the mirror. You said the selfie stick? Should we try that? Yeah, Let let's take a selfie it. together. Okay. Well, that's a mirror. I don't want that. <laughs> Stuff doesn't really go away, is it? You have to... You have to grab it. it, and then there's a clear button you can hit on your right yeah, wrist there if we you go. time it right. Here's a selfie stick. Is that... But well, that's yours. I guess I can't grab yours. You can't? No, I can only grab mine. Oh, there we go. Now, let's there get a go. picture of us. So we already posted a few of these. Here, wave, everybody. Wave. Whoops. I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> wave. There we go. All right. So we can see the people behind us. Should we get them in the... Here, let's face this way. We'll get the... Okay. Yeah, let's get them in. Get the people behind us. Yeah, what are you, dabbing? I am dabbing, okay. yeah. <laughs> or am I sneezing? I can't okay, tell. that's good. Now, <laughs> uh, so I've got a pi some pictures here. Now I can review them. I can pick them up. And then I have on my wrist here, I could share these. Let's just share it. Now it's, it's shared on Facebook. Yep. All right. It's pretty Let's, simple to get it up there. It's on your timeline. It should tag me. Pretty How easy. long have you been uh, playing with it? I'm going to delete some of these because they're, they're pretty bad. Uh, ju you know, I guess maybe just about a week. It came out in beta not that long ago. Uh, oh, look. The there's a picture conference. of you with your car. Yeah, that, that's me when I bought my car recently. That's nice. So the I can pick up, I guess I can pick up your pictures. And I can delete them, too. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, can you put us in a new world? Can you do that? I can do that. Ooh. Whoa! So this is CNN's uh, VR app. Well, uh, okay. So, yeah. bug number one, the waterfall's going up. Oh, so you're upside down? You're not upside down? I, I'm not upside down on my end, but you are on yours. Let's yeah, let's choose something different. Oh, huh? this is scary. I'm looking. Uh, let's Hello? choose something different. Wow, I feel like I'm flying. Let me get this out of. Where's this? So oh! if you're, we're in Thailand. <laughs> this is from the Associated Press, and um, this is actually uh, it's supposed to be a video, but it doesn't look like it's necessarily moving no, yet. No, those people over there are moving. Oh, are they? They're just moving really slowly. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, there you go, somebody. 
But yeah, there are is lots it, of different is options. Is it upside here. down for you or just me? Uh, looks like just you, which is well, not a weird. great thing. So this speaks to the bugginess of spaces so far. It is technically in a beta, but this is the sort of thing, the upside down world, that makes it feel like, like an alpha, to be honest. You know, that's kind of cool, though, is that we are in, we're on our table up in space, and we, get me, get, get. <laughs> and if I, I mean, it, this is a little bit like scary, right? We're floating up above, it looks like Venice. Exactly. If you yeah. are afraid of heights, this is not the one you want to pick. I like it, though. It's kind of cool. It is kind of cool, and if you want to maybe go and see like a friend's vacation photos or something, that could be kind of cool. Actually, uh, Jason Howell took some photos. Let me drop those for you. Oh, it rebooted. It, it rebooted. rebooted your app. No I just, fun. We just all left. We all left. I don't want to put my hand on the table, but there's no, there's no, it feels like I should be able to lean on this. Um, now, how, uh, you, uh, how do I... I'm requesting to join you right I now. I know. So, yeah, this is early days, obviously. Super early days, but I guess, you know, if you and I were pretty lucky, we'd see each other on a regular basis, but if we lived across the world, this might be interesting and useful. I don't know, is this better than, say, maybe just well, like a, a FaceTime chat you call can't, or something? Um, it's not you. It's, it's not even that much like you. I guess that's someday, here we are, now we're in the same room. Um, I, <laughs> and you look like Wesley Snipes from Demolition Man right now. Right, there you go. And, so. uh, and <laughs> what does he look like? He looks familiar. <laughs> I don't know. What do I look like? Okay, hold on. We've got to take a selfie of whatever okay. we look like right now. <laughs> and we're actually in a, we're a picture. We're in the picture. This is a picture of our studio. Yeah, so Jason Howell we're took this. Jason Howell took this photo um, with a 360-degree camera. Uh, and so that's I, the key. So exactly. you have to have a 360 degree camera and or movie camera to do this. Can it be anyone? Can it be the Samsung and the? Yep, it can be know, anyone. Rico? And then you just upload it to your regular Facebook photos. Oh, look at this. This is our back lot. Yeah, this is on top of Jason's Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a ride. Yeah. Wow. Pretty interesting. And here's the photo I just shared to Facebook. Oh, that's great. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you and I don't have anything below the waist, but that's about right. Yeah, you know, I guess maybe that's something they'll get around to adding, but so far that isn't quite part of the picture yet. I have to say, uh, and of course you guys at home aren't really, you're seeing, you know, I don't know what you're seeing, but, <laughs> but for those of us in here, it's kind of cool. I mean, uh, it's, it's primitive. You, you feel a little frustrated because it's like you don't really have control of your hands and you could, you know, it's kind of weird. But at the same time, we are... And I don't know if it's a great social experience, to be honest with you. Although yeah. I am talking to a plastic representation of you at this point, which is weird. Well, well it's novel at this point, but is it better than Skype? Is it better than Hangouts? No. Is it better than no. FaceTime? Mm, maybe not yet, right? But the, what's neat is that you can share pictures with me, right? So, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and I could pick this up and... Can we play games? Are there any games that we can play? Uh, pong, there, there are some games, and let me see if I can figure out how to play those. Mm -hmm. There's tools. Tools so far has... This is kind of cool. I can draw. Yeah, you can draw in, in uh, three-dimensional space, which is really neat. Which is amazing. I mean, this is like... like I, oh, look, I'll draw on the Buddha. No, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> don't want to make him angry. Um, what else do I have? I have, uh, if I click tools... I have uh, a mirror, I guess, a uh, drawing pencil, and the selfie stick. Yeah. Now, if I take this, I can also make it an eraser because every time I take, it's just <laughs> it's drawing it's drawing everywhere. Can I can I make this? Uh, oh, whoa! <laughs> I think is, you just. I, it is, looks like you just drew directly into your head. Yeah, maybe I can. Can I grab the? I know it's weird, but yeah. it's kind of fun. They need they need to do some work on actually coming up with more for you to do here. This would be awesome if maybe we were sitting, say, courtside to an NBA game or something, but that well, doesn't Well, if it were you and me yet, sitting right? courtside, yeah. And right? You could, you could watch the game and you can look at each other. I would want to do that. That could be fun. But that doesn't exist yet. So right. Facebook really needs to build out a lot more. I guess that's why this is a beta. But for me, this really does kind of feel like an alpha because there's really only so much you can do here. <laughs> yeah, my... <laughs> It's like a rubber band. I don't. <laughs> I put this in eraser mode. Okay. 
You can also pick something up and then hit the clear button, it looks like. This is like a booger. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> what happened? Did we crash it? Whoa, you just disappeared in like a burst of emojis. <laughs> I wish you would have seen what I saw. It was all the like little smiley faces and thumbs up and sad faces all exploding in the air oh. at once. Whoa, you did the same thing. How did, how did you do how did that? You do, I don't know how you just That's did that. That's cool. Well, you just did it too. I, I didn't realize. I've been here the whole time. That's amazing. Okay, I give up. I can't, can't erase anything. Uh, I'm just going to have to live with this blue line that I put here. <laughs> it's very 3D, though. It's hard to describe. What, what's that? Now this, so these balls you're putting are, oh, look, we're at a ball game. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it, no one's playing yet, so I guess we're a little too early for the game, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of quiet. Also, there seems to be nothing behind us. Is this uh, Yankee Stadium? I'm trying no, to... this is a, a Coors Field where the Colorado Coors Rockies Field. play. Coors Field, of course it is, yeah. 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 Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be loading. So that's kind of a problem. So to do that, I press the media button, and then I can see a list of uh, all the media in my timeline, but I can also click yep. explore, and this is other people's stuff. Exactly. So like, And I then you just put your finger up. through it. Yep. You put a finger through it? And then you put the globe in the center of the table. So, so I grab that and put yeah. that there. Oh, that's kind of neat. And now we're in Furby land. Uh, uh, Whoa, well, what is this? Kakamora Orchestra. Whoa, oh. dude. So now it's up. It's up, it's upside down for me right now. Is it upside down for you? Oh no! So there's a problem. It's not upside down for me, but it is for me. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. This is good. This is I'm like the uh, the Ewok scene in The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> kind of similar, kind yeah. of similar. So, uh, these are all things we can play with. I could go to a, we could go to a, you want to go to a fashion? Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. Fashion week or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think this is a, this is a Vogue fashion oh. show. Now, see, that's kind of cool. Another event that you might want to actually go to. I wish I could get this blue thing out of here. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe this is broken. Can I get it out of here? No. See, sometimes when you grab something, the buttons show up and then you press them and nothing happens. <laughs> uh, this is supposed to be a fashion show. Sam, we can go to a Samsung event. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, though, here. And these are, so these aren't necessarily designed for this tool. These are just 360 degree videos. 360 degree videos and photos. And I guess it's kind of at this point to encourage companies, partners, media brands. Exactly. You wanna, uh, let's see, I don't want, I'm not gonna put the horror picture up there, that's creepy. <laughs> Talking Toilets by Bill Gates, what? Okay, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. <laughs> <laughs> no, now we're on a concert stage. Yeah. Wow. And it is appropriately not before a concert. Yeah. What band is this? Uh, the 1990 Concerto di Primo Maggio. I don't know. It looks like people are looking at us. I'm kind of embarrassed. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? Uh, this is, is this available for free if you have an Oculus Rift set up? If you have an Oculus Rift, which of course isn't cheap, this app right now is free. It is in beta, so get prepared for the bugs. You're part of the, you're a guinea pig at this point. You're part of the testing experience. What do you think they're planning to do with this? Well, you know, I think to a certain extent, this is them trying to figure out what hanging out with friends in VR looks like a right, social experience. Right. There's actually a startup called uh, Altspace, which I think is doing something a little bit more compelling. You're like in like a really cool looking loft or home and you can watch like, you know, a, a big screen together. You can interact and talk. This is something slightly different, a different vision, but it's really a starting point to figure out what people could and should do together in virtual space. Oh, you want to visit some penguins at SeaWorld? Let's check it out. I love this process of breaking. oh it just crashed again no it's just it, i'm accidentally hitting my pause button oh. upside down penguins is that what's upside down for you uh they are right side up for me and they are gigantic so, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna watch get out eaten watch out he's gonna eat your head <laughs> <laughs> well there you have it this is facebook whoa 
This is Facebook Spaces. It's kind of fun, I have to say. Um, that's a demo for it. It's free. Of course, you have to have an Oculus Rift uh, system, which is not an easy thing uh, to do. You're going to spend some money. Yep. Uh, what is about 800 bucks for the Rift? You've got to get the touch controllers, another couple of hundred bucks, and of course, a PC. you got to get a PC. $1,000 or more PC. It's going to be a couple grand by the time you're all done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get, in other words, get a friend to buy it. <laughs> exactly. Coming up, another call for help in just a bit. We're going to talk about VPNs and how this can protect you online. But first, here's Megan Maroney with a tip on keeping a reading your email on your Amazon Echo Watch. I am always on the lookout for new apps that will help me become more of an inbox zero ninja. Newton from Cloud Magic is an app for your Mac, your iPhone, your Android phone, your iPad, and now you can even manage your email from your Amazon Echo. Here's how. First, install the Newton app and sign in with your email account. It works with most email services. Next, go to your Echo app and enable the Newton skill. You'll have to authorize your Echo to access your Newton email. Then say, Echo, ask Newton if I've got mail. Hi, Megan. You have six new mails from Anthony, Megan, and Burke. Would you like me to read them? Yes. Megan started a conversation. Subject, you're doing a great job. Megan says, keep on trucking. What do you want me to do with this mail? Delete it. Okay, deleted mail. Can I read the next mail? Yes. Anthony started a conversation. Subject, we need screensavers shorts. Anthony says, can you shoot a tech short for this week's the new screensavers? Help me, Megan Marone. You're my only hope. Your fan. What do you want me to do with this mail? Snooze till tomorrow. Okay, it's snoozed. Burke started a conversation. Subject, get rid of that Jason Howell. Burke says, you need a wathy, silent co-host. What do you want me to do with this mail? Archive. Okay, archived email. You can also say mark as read, delete, archive, mark as spam, snooze till later, snooze till afternoon, snooze till tomorrow, snooze till day after tomorrow, snooze till Saturday, snooze till Monday, snooze to desktop. If you hear an alert and you're not near your phone or your computer, you can also say, Echo, ask Newton who that email was from. It was Megan. Do you want me to read the mail? Yes. Megan says, to let Jason know that Burke wants his job. What do you want me to do with this mail? Snooze till Tuesday. Okay, it's snoozed. So now you can triage your email hands-free while you're cooking, showering, exercising at home, or just laying on the couch too lazy to get up. The Newton app is free to try on your phone or your Mac, but it is $50 a year to keep. I am Megan Maroney, and I host Tech News Today every Monday through Friday with Jason Howell. And I also host iOS Today every Monday here on the Twit Network. Don't forget to subscribe to all our podcasts. Echo, ask Newton to read my email. You're all caught up. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Megan Maroney. That's, you know, sometimes I, I watch this show, and I think back almost 20 years when we were doing tech TV. If we had seen... The, the, the screensavers 20 years in the future and we're in a 3D world and we're playing with stuff and we have this machine in our house that we could talk to. It sounded a lot like Heil 9000 reading yep. The, yep. the messages to the astronauts in the 2001 A Space Odyssey. We're living in the future, Leo. We're kind of living in the future. <laughs> but what's funny is the future's kind of crappy. Like, <laughs> like it's kind of doing the stuff we thought it would do. But, but not at the same time. It's a little janky. Yeah, it's like it's yeah, not... Yeah. Honestly, emails, even when it's read aloud to you, still kind of sucks. Yeah, like, maybe that's I, the problem. I can't quickly scan I someone reading that for me. That way. Yeah, take, way too many. weeks to do a day's mail. Yeah. All right, we got another call for help. This is uh, pre-recorded. Uh, Donna from Austin, Texas. Go ahead, Donna. Okay. Hi, Leo. This is Donna from Austin, and I'm really interested in how to choose and how to use a VPN. Mainly I'm concerned about security on our Apple devices. I have two iOS Apple devices and we have two iMacs here at home and we do all our financials online. So I have always thought that a VPN would be a good idea, but I don't really know which one to use and I don't know how to use them. And I also need it to work with my Apple Watch. Okay, I can show you how to do that, but let me say it will not make you more secure. 
Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're, if you're in your house and you're doing all this stuff, the, the, you know, the, the one area of insecurity would be your Wi-Fi network. Make sure you tune out, turn on WPA2 encryption. That's all you need to do. That makes it secure, as wired is. Yes. And when you're transacting with a bank, with Amazon, even when you're doing a search on Google or visiting Facebook, all of those are encrypted over and above the conversation. So you're as secure as you can be when you're in your own home. Exactly. The reason why you'd want to use a VPN would be to, to change your location, mask your location, right. so that uh, if someone was collecting information on what you're doing online, they wouldn't know where you're at, right. uh, or uh, to kind of like fake out uh, maybe an ISP is to tracking well, what you're doing online. Yeah, where. lately after the House's or Congress's vote and the President signed a bill that basically retracted privacy controls on internet service providers. Now I should point out those controls hadn't really taken place yet anyway, so everything is as it has been all along. Which uh, wasn't great to begin wasn't with. Wasn't great, uh, but I don't think you're going to have a great experience in using a VPN full time in your home. It slows mm -hmm. you down, mm -hmm. maybe 50%. Maybe more, depending on the VPN. It will restrict you from some services. Netflix won't w let you watch Netflix on a VPN because they can't verify that you are who you say you are. Our chat room, same problem. We won't let you use a VPN because mm -hmm. people use VPNs to hack, to attempt to hack our chat room. And so we don't know who you are. So there's a lot of places you can't use a VPN. But if you're on an open Wi Fi access point, if you're at a Starbucks, if you're out and about, in the airport, in the airport, you should remember, whenever you join an open Wi-Fi access point, you're joining a network with many other people on it, and anybody else on that network can kind of see what you're doing. Now, once again, anything you do on Facebook or Google or Amazon or your bank or almost any shopping site is safe. It's encrypted. It has its own level of encryption. Even yes. your email is encrypted. If, you have a, if you're using Gmail or any decent email provider, both the password and the actual email transactions encrypted. Mm -hmm. So they're safe. If you wanted to take one more step, you could get, you know, you could buy, uh, here's one of our former sponsors, Tunnel Bear, very popular VPN service. Uh, you, you have to pay them a subscription fee. Uh, it's not, uh, it used to be you'd have to run some software uh, on on a site to or on your computer rather to use a VPN not anymore all computers have VPN capability mm -hmm. uh, that's one way to do it people do it also if they want to watch uh, TV in other countries like the BBC but uh, that's one of the reasons Netflix blocks VPNs yep I use this is what I use when I go around and I've shown this before but I want to show it to you again this is from a company uh, called Wi-Fi Consulting in Washington DC this is their tiny hardware firewall and in fact, I have another one that they make. They make a variety of these devices. And this one's cool because it would go on your keychain. Yeah, very small, pocketable. Right. You could plug it into uh, one of those batteries. This is another one that's plugged in and running off of a battery. This would run all day on a pocketable battery. Or you plug it into your computer, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is this device, and I'm going to show you how to use this one, the littlest one, because this is the easiest to carry, will take the internet access from the coffee shop and connect you to it through this device, which is then connecting through a VPN or a VPN and Tor, which will anonymize your stuff. So let me show you. I'm gonna plug this in, plug it into my laptop. It's gonna take a little while to boot up, so I will have to be a little bit patient because this is, it, what's in here is a little computer, but mm -hmm. it's a very cheap, slow computer. So it takes a couple of, um, maybe two minutes to boot up. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, just keep it plugged into a battery you know, all day and then, mm -hmm. and then charge it up at night. When I'm in a hotel, often this is the setup I will use and I'll just leave this running. All of these devices allow multiple connections. So your phone can connect. You said you wanted your watch to be secure. It can connect through your phone and directly. Your, all your computers, you can usually have at least five devices connected to this. Once it is booted up, let's see if it's, uh, if it's going, I will see a new Wi-Fi access point. I've named this one Roadhouse. So as soon as I see Roadhouse, we can do it. Not yet. So we're going to give it a little time to, uh, to get online. Once I see Roadhouse, I'll log in. I've set the password. Uh, it comes with a default password and a default name, something like A-G-Z-Z-Y-Y-K-K-K. -K -K. You'll want to change both of those for ease of use. Uh, still booting, so I should have just left it plugged in. And again, the reason why this kind of slows down what you're doing is because, as you said, it's a small computer. 
Not always the most user friendly if you're doing this daily in your home, but if you're on the go, this really makes I sense. Do recommend kind of a way it. to keep you a little yeah. more secure on the road, right? I do recommend it. All right, now we're seeing Roadhouse in my Wi Fi. I've already logged into it, so I don't have to enter the password. It's just another Wi Fi access point, but you control it through your browser. So I'm going to log in to my Wi Fi configuration. This is actually the configuration in a little web server running inside that little USB dongle. I can configure the wireless, and when you first arrive, you're going to want to configure it for the Starbucks or the hotel wireless. You're going to give it the password if there is one. It can join captive portals. It works fine for that. And now, you can see I have a VPN and a proxy. I am going to, in a quick action here, connect to the internet, and then, which I've done, but let's do it, and then it's going to connect to the internet, and then I'm going to go through the VPN. Now, Real quickly, if I do, right now we're on a high speed internet connection that's going to give us almost a gigabit. Now that I'm configured on a, v, on a VPN, let's, uh, let's connect to the VPN. You're not going to get speeds like that. It's going to be 1 20th the speed, mm -hmm. but it's going to be anonymous and it's going to be secure. One other thing to consider is the VPN, you got to choose carefully because they see everything your ISP would see. So we'll go real quickly to IP leaks. Uh, IPLeak.net. It'll tell us our address and some information about our connection. And because we're on a VPN, I'm not going to be coming anymore from Petaluma, California. I'm coming from Colorado on a VPN server running at FDCservers.net. That may change from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's not consistent, but that's what you want. I have a new IP address. If I now surf the net, I appear to be coming from Colorado and everything's encrypted. But remember, the endpoint has the same access that your ISP does. Do I trust Comcast less than I trust FDCservers.net or TunnelBear or ProXPN? You got to ask that question. Do they? You want one that won't log stuff that you can trust? This is this is kind of a hard choice to make. Yeah. Either way, you're leaving a trail. It's just who has the it's trail. Who has the trail? And what does the trail look like? Now we could do one more step. First of all, let me do. Let me really quickly just run a, a benchmark. We'll go to Fast.com. That's Netflix. Uh, speed tester and you can see I'm not getting anywhere near the thousand megabits per second I no, should be getting definitely it's not. more like five megabits per second uh, it's it's considerably slower you want to see it get even slower let's turn on the Tor Tor now routes my traffic not only through a VPN but through a number of onion routers all over the world to an to try to attempt to anonymize my traffic if you watch our subject our uh, interviews about Tor you'll understand that only a state actor who could see all of the internet would have any chance of seeing who you are. Or perhaps somebody with a uh, corrupted Tor exit node, if you would happen to use that exit node, you might be coming out at FBI headquarters in, in Virginia. You don't, you don't really get to choose which Tor you're on. Um, now I think I'm on Tor. Let's see if I go back here. If I am on Tor and I refresh this, I will not, it's kind of fun, I will not be, uh, I will not be at uh, I, uh, Colorado anymore. I could be anywhere in the world. Last time I used this, I was in Egypt. Oh, okay. Yeah, anywhere in the world, wherever that Tor exit node is, and that's somewhat random. And we can see how much even oh, boy, slower is it, slow. it is now. <laughs> because oh, you boy, is it slow. Uh, I'm not even going to try an internet speed test. It, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's fast. So, <laughs> in other words, you can do it, but you give up. Uh, and uh, you give up speed, you give up performance, you may give up connectivity to some sites. And I should point out, you may not have as much anonymity as you expect. Yeah. Because that you're at the mercy of, you just kick the can down the road. Yeah, you really need to be thinking about what you're going to use this specifically for. If you want, if you're doing something online that you literally don't want people to, to, to be able to know is you, like your ISP or something, again, not watching Netflix, not logging into your bank or whatever, then that's what this is for. This isn't a, basically just to have set up in the background I for every single thing you're doing day in and day but out. But I don't think that's it's a bad it. idea to, to use this if you are uh, uh, at an open Wi-Fi access point and you're, and you're concerned, you know, about who might be snooping. Yeah, if you're a road warrior, you're traveling a lot, this this yeah. makes sense. This is uh, the Wi-Fi consulting folks run Hotspot VPN, but they often have a new system that they're now using that they claim each person has their own VPN server and they claim is considerably faster. So that might be worth uh, taking a look at. This router is a lot faster. These routers are much higher end hardware. 
than the little USB dongle. Uh, I, I've mixed. Do you use a VPN when you're on an open Wi-Fi access? Um, you know, I've tested a bunch, but uh, not on a not regular day to day. not on a regular yeah. basis. I mean, being frank with you. It, if I'm, you know, in an airport or in a coffee shop or whatever, I just don't really do much on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, and I definitely don't do anything that I'm sensitive about. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> you'd have to be really uh, paranoid to want to use Tor, too, because, and uh, you know, if you're a whistleblower or you're a dissident in a country where it's not safe to be a dissident, it's nice to have that capability. I'm really, I really like this device because it's so small. It, it, it's easy to set up. Once you've got it set up, you saw it was fairly quick to... It's great to have the option. Yeah. So I hope that helps you, Donna. Uh, just judging from your question and where you are, I would say you're fine. Just make sure you use a Wi-Fi password. That's the, the most important thing. Next week, Aaron Newcomb will be our, uh, our host in the show. And here's how you can ask a question of the author of Linux for Makers. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Yeah, we, uh, eventually I got uh, 780 kilobits per second. <laughs> not, not enough to use Skype to do anything. Let's see, this is a little faster now. This is just the VPN. So that's a little bit, that's not so bad. That's a little bit better. Um, it, oh, once, once again, don't forget, makerfair.com. Maker Fair with an E at the end.com if you want to join us on the 19th. Aaron Newcomb, Father Robert Ballas, Aaron and I will all be at Maker Fair. Maybe Nathan will come down. It's going to be a good We'd time. We'd love to see you. Our show today, we'll get some email and questions in a bit, but our show today brought to you by WordPress. Uh, I am now a WordPress fanatic. I, it actually has returned. I've come home to WordPress. If you go to my blog, leolaporte.com, you can take a look at my new WordPress site. I'm very proud of it. Uh, <laughs> It's, well, you know what's nice is this has a variety of pictures. So every time you visit it, there's me and Patrick, the old Oh, screenshot. cool. Here's some blog posts. Uh, it make it very easy for me to get all my data over there. You see my tweets on the right. Uh, also, my Instagram pictures. Uh, I, I hooked it up with Goodreads as well. You can hook it up with a variety of different um, uh, social media networks. For home, your blog, for your business, WordPress powers 27% of the web, and there's good reason for that. They are simply the best content management system. So many sites you might visit from day to day, like Paul Therott's Therott.com, use WordPress as their content management system. Some big, big companies use WordPress. WordPress gives you hundreds of themes to start with. You pick a template, you make it your own, you get so much value. Now, I used to host my own WordPress. I got tired after a while of updating it and fixing it. The beauty of WordPress.com, they do the hosting. They keep the software up to date. And there's an amazing WordPress.com community. When you get a post, and I can take it from me, on the front page of WordPress, you get a lot more traffic. People really can favorite you and follow you. So it's a social network as much as a web hosting. Uh, you get great 24-7 support. You, you, you get all of the great plugins, all of the themes. You, if you're an experienced developer, the sky's the limit. But if you've never done this before, you'll find it easy to make your first website. Whether it's a personal blog, a business site, or both, you're going to make a big impact when you build your site on WordPress.com. You know, I've been using it again for about a month. It, f it feels like coming home, but then I'm at, it's like a great playground for me because I'm finding all sorts of new features and plugins for podcasters, all sorts of stuff. We'll give you a 15% off right now with your new purchase at wordpress.com slash NSS. Create your website. Find the membership plan that's right for you at wordpress.com slash NSS. I'm a massive WordPress fan. It really feels good to be back on the on the WordPress. By the way, they support SoundCloud too. It makes it very easy to do. Uh, I think we should uh, take a look at a brand new TV solution. We were talking about cord cutting earlier. I, uh, I've been using YouTube mm -hmm. TV, which I really like. There's PlayStation View. That's what you use. Yep. You yep. like it? I like it. It's, you know, none of these services so far for me is perfect. None has everything that I want. But so far, it's the right mix. But I'm super excited to see what Hulu has up its sleeve because, uh, you know, it's owned by most of the major, right. uh, you right. know, big uh, uh, public broad, you know, not public, but uh, TV broadcasters. So one of the things that's made a huge difference is the local stations now are available in some cities. Yes, not, every city, not all cities. But in San Francisco, we're lucky enough. Jason Howell took a little ride with Hulu with live TV. Here's his review. Radio. 
Everyone is getting into the live TV on the internet thing. Coming off the heels of YouTube's new service, YouTube TV, is Hulu. that just released its own live TV service called Hulu Live TV. Let's take a first look at what it offers. Hulu is already well known for providing tons of up-to-date network content on demand shortly after they air. Hulu has reworked their UI in the Android app, as you see here, to incorporate the live content alongside that on-demand content. Here's my home screen that shows recommendations of content that Hulu thinks I might like. I've already picked some of my favorite channels from their list, and now I have direct access to those here. But if I keep swiping to the side, I get all sorts of other categories to rein in that content. Tapping on my stuff down below gives me a more concise list of things I've explicitly told Hulu that I'm interested in. But at the end of this carousel, there is the DVR list. The core service affords 50 hours of cloud DVR. I can actually increase that to 200 hours by paying more per month. That upgrade, by the way, also includes the ability to skip commercials. Tapping into browse shows brings up a more streamlined list of content categories. I could jump into networks, for example, and there I'm shown what's currently live on each of the more than 60 channels that are included with Hulu Live TV. I'll tap into a show here that's playing live right now, and after a bit of buffering, as you see, it plays full screen. Everything looks nice and sharp with quality controls built in. I can cast this to my Chromecast if I happen to have one on my TV set. If I want this show dvr going forward, I just tap to add it to my episodes, and the next episode of that show will be recorded and then added to my DVR list that I showed you earlier. Finally, tapping the flip tray button pulls up a carousel of other live programs that I can jump right to, kind of like channel surfing. Now, skinny bundles are never perfectly comprehensive, and Hulu Live TV is no different. The big four networks are here, but will only stream live in certain major cities, which is kind of a bummer. However, you do have access to Hulu's on-demand offerings, like I said, so you can check the shows out a day later in most cases. Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, ESPN, HGTV, Sci-Fi, and a bunch more networks are included, but you won't find anything from Viacom, so no Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, MTV, VH1, also no Discovery or AMC. And if you want Showtime, that's the only premium channel upgrade available at the moment. That costs an additional $8.99 per month. The strength of Hulu Live TV seems to be the ability to fall back on its on-demand catalog when needed. You might feel limited by the 50-hour DVR restriction of the base service price of $39.99, though a $15 per month upgrade actually brings that up to 200 hours. And you can always check Hulu Live TV for free, if you like, for the first seven days to see how many boxes it checks off on your own priority list. I'm Jason Howell, and you can always find me every day, every weekday anyways, on Tech News Today, as well as Talk and Google on All About Android. I'll have to ask Jason, because he's also tried YouTube TV, reviewed it for us a couple of weeks ago, which is better. I think YouTube is a better price. This one's expensive when you add the DVR and the, and the Showtime and the live local. By that time, you're paying almost as much as your cable bill. Yeah, which is problematic. I mean, all of these services are a, a bit expensive these days. And it's interesting. All of them kind of start with a very narrow package yeah. of, of networks and services and things like this. And then over time, they, they kind of expand. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where Hulu goes. Bang for your buck, though, it might not be the best one yeah. yet. You like PlayStation View, but you said so it's not far. perfect. Yeah, 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 none of them are perfect. But it none has a lot of the sports channels that I want. Uh, right. It has things like MTV. and uh, It has Viacom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, has, it has like Comedy Central and all these things. Interesting. Things, yeah. It's time for the mailbag. Roll it in. There's Jerry's arm. <laughs> I am Jerry's arm. And you know, we're in such a good mood today. We thought we'd break out the... <laughs> this is like uh, the dating game. Remember where they throw a kiss to everybody? These are from uh, my good friend Throwboy, I think. This is a Throwboy, I hope. Oh, is this a knockoff? You got a Target? Oh, I don't want it. <laughs> All right, pick an email, any email. Uh, let's go with this one. I love Throwboy. We're going to support Throwboy. Email one comes to us from Shannon. We have, we have an iPhone 5S. So what does that mean for me with Apple not deciding not to support that or the 5C? My son only uses it for social media and texting, rarely for phone calls. Thanks. Shannon, the, what Apple says when they say we're not going to support it is merely that you can no longer update iOS. Exactly. So iOS 10 is 
That's it. You're done. Yeah, you're locked into an older version of the operating system. That's fine. It, it's fine if this isn't your daily driver device or if this is just like, you know, you're just using a few apps. What you're not going to get at some point, app updates aren't going to come uh, to your device because they are dependent on the operating system. So you might miss out on some security that features there. That takes another year or two after it this. It usually takes a while. Yeah. So, so Apple's pretty good about supporting the devices maybe about five years out. Those software updates usually last a couple years. So you're probably about a couple years away At from least. upgrading yeah. a device. But the reason why any manufacturer stops uh, supporting devices, in part because of uh, ha uh, hardware limitations uh, for their software demands, but also in part to get you to upgrade. So in the next couple years, you might want to think about upgrading. If you're just using, your son's just using it for social media and texting, you know, he's, he is going to continue to get security updates, right? Yes. So it's not going to get less secure. You know, I think probably. You, you, you know, you don't, in other words, don't worry until you have to. At yeah. some point, your son's going to say, Mom, I can't get the new Instagram, and I have to have it. Exactly. That's when you're going to say, then get a job and buy yourself a new phone. <laughs> All right. Question two. All right. Uh, this comes from uh, John, and it says, Hi, new screensavers. I have an old Onkyo receiver and surround sound speaker system, which I love. Currently, I use it with an old Apple TV connected to it via optical audio and to the TV via HDMI video. I want to switch it out for a new Apple TV, but there is no optical audio out. To the best of my knowledge, my receiver won't play audio from the HDMI cable. What can what? I do? Why won't it, John? Uh, I bet you it will. <laughs> That's the answer. Uh, if it's an AV receiver, and it is because it has HDMI in and HDMI out, you don't need the optical cable. I yeah. bet you just never tried it. HDMI, every single HDMI cable, every single HDMI port and device supports audio and, and video. video. That's that's Both. part of the cell of HDMI, and that's right. part of why manufacturers started using it uh, and why it became so popular and, and it across. it's the same exact digital bits that you get on the optical connection. Exactly. So it's exactly as good. Uh, it's actually a lot simpler. Lip sync is less of an issue because they're both coming through the same channel. I, unless your receiver is broken or some somehow strange, I've never heard of an AV receiver that wouldn't do audio and video over HDMI. I bet you just never tried. So, in fact, that's how I run my onk, old Onkyo receiver. I connect the Roku, the Apple TV, uh, the Xbox, all of my HDMI devices with an HDMI cable into the HDMI in and then the one HDMI out goes to, and if you really want to get fancy, the audio return channel or ARC HDMI port. Almost all HDMI capable TVs have one HDMI channel at least that has ARC. And the ARC is in case you're watching uh, something on the television set. Maybe your TV does Netflix, for instance. You want to watch Netflix. That's so the audio can come now back down the uh, HDMI cable from the TV into the AV receiver and then into your speaker system. Mm -hmm. So plug your HDMI into the ARC channel on your TV and try that Apple TV. I bet you'll be surprised. If for some reason it doesn't work, simply put, your receiver isn't working as it should. And, yeah. and, and you should get take it, yeah, your you receiver's get that broke. fixed. It's That's broke, man. That's the actual problem. Yeah, it's yeah. broke. Uh, <laughs> good answer. That's, you know, sometimes, okay, don't tell anybody, but people call us and that's all the answer is, is no, it's broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough breaks, stuff breaks. Yeah. But not Nathan Oliveira's Giles. He never breaks. He's always in character. Uh, <laughs> what is my character? What is your character? If I'm always in character, I don't know. Please. I'm still seeing you in the in the VR thing. I feel like I want to <laughs> hang out with you in there. With the big forehead. We and the are VR. in spaces. <laughs> Nathan is a uh, regular on all of our shows. We see you all the time. Are we going to see you on the new screen? I mean, uh, Twit soon. I think so. Yeah. Next yeah. Week? Uh, yeah. So not next week, but I think the week, week after. after. Great. Yeah. I look forward to that. Yep. That'll be good. And of course, you can hear his podcast that he does with Mark Millian and Brian X Chen. And it's on, we know now, SoundCloud, and it's called? Buzzkill. Buzzkill. Yep. Why do you call it Buzzkill? So basically, it's just the three of us talking about things that we're interested in. We have a lot of overla overlapping interests, but we're not always interested in the same thing. So if any one of the three of us gets bored of the conversation, <laughs> you, you, we you actually hit a them? buzzer oh. and that kills the topic and we move on. So we we're trying that. to be clever. We need that here. Name. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if we... That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's Where'd the you idea. get the buzzer? Uh, well, it actually changes every week, so we find like little clips on YouTube. The the most recent episode, it was my least favorite buzzer. It was like an awkward laugh from Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> uh, very early on when he started. 
And every time we hit that buzzer, it just gave me, it just, yeah, <laughs> did not like it. Did not like it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. We appreciate it. We do the new screensavers every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. If you want to watch live, be in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. We'd love to have you. But you don't have to watch live because we make on-demand versions of everything we do available. You can go to our website, in this case, twit.tv slash NSS, or find your favorite podcast uh, app. There's so many good ones. In fact, there's Twit apps on every platform, but there's Pocket Casts and Stitcher and Overcast. Find one you like and subscribe. That way, every, you'll be surprised. Every Monday, you'll get in the car and you go, oh, there's a new, new Screensavers episode. Twit.tv slash NSS. If you can get a chance to come to San Mateo, Northern California for the Maker Fair on May 19th. We'd love to see you there. If not, we'll see you right here next week on the new screensavers. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>